Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, you are in the Reed College webinar for the New Jersey ACAC uh, virtual fair. I'm just going to start some introductory messages as we wait for uh, the rest of the students to log in. A um, couple things for you students. First of all, you need to know that you are both muted and your camera is turned off. Um, and so the presenters cannot see or hear you, but you can ask questions um, by using the Q&A box. So if you scroll your mouse near the bottom of your Zoom screen, you should see the Q&A box. Just click on that, it'll pop up and you can type in your questions. And our presenter, um, Lilia Cohen, she will answer them when she can, whether it's during the session or at the end. I uh, want everyone to know that the session is being recorded. So if you need to look up something again, or you know, you'll be able to watch it on demand. And that'll be posted in about, they say within a week, it should be posted to the website. So that'll be available for you as well. Um, also just a reminder that you can find, sign up for more sessions at the same website. And now I'm going to pass the floor to Lilia. And thank you everyone for being here. And thank you Lilia for being here, looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you so much for the introduction. I'm happy to be here. Thanks so much for taking time folks to um, come check out Reed and hear about Reed for the next, um, yeah, 40, 40 minutes or so. Um, so I'm Lilia Cohen. I am an assistant dean of admission here at Reed in beautiful sunny Portland, Oregon today. Um, so I am very much about asking and answering as many questions as I can throughout this. So I'm going to kind of give you an information session, basically, um, presenting a bunch of information about read, but really, really want this to be as conversational as possible. I know your mics are turned off, so we can't literally chat, but um, would love to have questions pop up in the box um, at any point. So this can really be more about catering to um, specific things you want to learn about Reed rather than me just talking at you this entire time. So I hope that sounds like a good plan. Um, if folks wouldn't mind just dropping in the Q&A right now, um, where where you live and um, like where you're from and um, your year in school. That would be fantastic. It'll also help me get used to this Q&A function. Portland, Oregon, senior in high school. Thank you, welcome. So you, you firsthand know that it is sunny in Portland today. New Jersey senior, cool. New Jersey junior, awesome. Great. Um, so it seems like we have a mix of juniors and seniors in the room, so that's awesome. Um, cool, let's go ahead and get started. Um, please again ask questions as they arise and we'll make sure that we have time to chat about admission at the end for about the last um, 10 minutes or so. Um, Reed College is a small liberal arts college. We are located in Portland, Oregon. Um, we have about 1400 students on campus. Um, and our, our student to faculty ratio is about 10 to one. So um, what that means is that our class sizes on average are about 13 to 14 students. So really small classes in general. Um, professors at Reed who are fully here to teach you, they are full-time tenured or tenure track professors. So really awesome opportunity for you to be able to get to know your professors um, and get to know your classmates in small class settings. One really great thing about Reed, um, which I know one of our participants knows firsthand, um, is that we are in the city of Portland. So you have the small liberal arts college experience um, with loads of things to do on campus, loads of opportunities um, just within your, your campus community. Um, and then you also have the awesome benefits of being in a city. So whether that's a job or an internship or just getting out and exploring um, a new city or a new part of town, um, um, you know, hitting a new coffee shop or um, the art museum, things like that. So a lot of our students will tell you that it's kind of the best of both worlds. Um, you really get the opportunity to have those tight-knit relationships and then also broaden your network and be in a city. 
So that's a little bit about our location, kind of where we are, um, and some, some quick facts and figures. Um, it should not be overlooked that we have students coming from all 50 states on, uh, on campus, so um, all over the country and also 40 countries around the world represented on campus. So um, for a student body population of about 1400, we have a lot of diversity, a lot of global diversity, folks coming from all over, all over the place. So yeah. Um, to start, if you decide that you want to come to read um, before your freshman year, before you even arrive on campus, you will sit down um, and kind of fill out some forms, you know, your housing form, your residence life form, your um, uh, all these various orientation signups and things like that. And one thing that you'll receive in the mail that's pretty distinct to read and kind of sets you off on a really awesome path into your first year is you'll get a letter that actually invites you to write a letter to your future academic advisor. So this will be a person at Reed who will be a professor within a department that you have indicated some level of interest in on your application. So if you come to Reed like many, many of our students with you know, three, four, five different academic interests, you'll be paired up with an advisor within one of these departments and you'll work with them really closely right away to register for classes, to kind of settle into Reed's campus and academic environment. Um, so again, before, before coming to campus, you will sit down and write them a letter. So you'll kind of introduce yourself, um, give them a little bit of a sense of who you are, what you're looking for in college, um, how they might be able to help you um, sort of succeed in your, your college years, um, and really get to know you, you know, right off the bat. So that's the purpose of that first academic advisor that you have. Um, and then again, when you arrive on campus, you'll sit down and you'll register for classes with them. So the average course load at Reed is going to be four classes per semester. So typically that will be um, your course load. Uh, we have a pretty open curriculum as far as the types of classes that you can get take um, through your distribution requirements. Um, we'll talk about that here in a few minutes. Um, but one thing that is important to know is that every single first year student takes an introductory humanities class called Humanities 110. Um, and I'm going to talk through sort of the, the nitty gritty ins and outs of Hume 110 because it's a really important, really meaningful kind of time in your first year at Reed, especially. So Humanities 110 uh, really is your introduction to the liberal arts and I'll talk about why. So it's a um, full year long humanities class. Every single first year student takes it. Um, it is broken up into a few different categories and components. So the first one is lecture. Um, if you know about liberal arts colleges and kind of the way that classes are set up, you'll know that the vast majority of your classes at Reed are gonna be really small. Um, you know, again, as I said earlier, 10, 15 students, with the exception of this lecture for Humanities 110, which is actually gonna be all 375 of you together. So you'll meet three times per week as an entire freshman class, and you'll get lectures from different professors who comprise the Humanities 110 department. So there will actually be 22 faculty members who make up the department, and they'll come from all different disciplines across campus, from the humanities to the social sciences, and they will rotate on a rotating basis. They'll give you lectures in any given week. So you'll meet three times a week for lecture and hear from different professors. Let's say one week you are reading uh, Plato's Symposium. Maybe on Monday you hear from a philosophy professor. Wednesday, maybe it's an art history professor. And Friday, perhaps it's a linguistics professor. So you're again hearing from these three different faculty members um, on the same text. The liberal arts and kind of the the motto, but the back, backdrop, background of what a liberal arts education is, is really to allow you to grow and gain both a breadth and a depth of knowledge. So these lecture series is really a great way for you to start off on your journey of gaining this breadth of knowledge, right? You might come to read, um, super excited to study political science, and then maybe you hear from an art history professor in Hume 110, and you think, wow, that's a really cool way of thinking about this topic. I wanna take an art history class now or something like that. So a really great way for you to explore, experience other kinds of ways of thinking, um, new, new types of professors, new types of um, disciplines, all of that. So that's the lecture component. Um, but as I said earlier, 
your classes at Reed are not going to be full of 375 people ever again. What's going to be far more common is what we call conference. Um, so at Reed, conference is that small kind of around around table, um, more Q&A style kind of discussion based class and learning environment. So for HUME 110, you'll break up into your small conference. Um, you'll meet two or three times a week and you'll really dive deeply into the material together. So you'll um, ask questions about the lecture, you'll talk about potential paper topics, um, discuss the text with your classmates. And one of those 22 faculty members who comprises the department will be your conference leader throughout the entirety of the year. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you'll really get to know them and they'll really get to know you, your writing, the way you think, all of that. It's also an op awesome opportunity for you to really get to know a small group of your peers right off the bat, <clears throat> because in addition to your other classes, you'll have this reliable group of, of peers throughout the entirety of the year with this shared experience with the same professor. So it's kind of, in a way, your <clears throat> kind of group, your academic group right off the bat when you're a first year at Reed. So that's conference. And then the third and final component of HUME 110 is what we call paper conference, which is gonna be every time you turn in a paper for Humanities 110 and you get it back, you'll meet with your professor for about an hour one-on-one -on -one to go over your work with them. So this is a phenomenal opportunity for you to work on your writing really firsthand, really in great depth with a, with a faculty member um, early on in your time at Reed. They're not just going to be pointing out things in your essays like you missed a comma here or the grammar is off in this particular place or um, the sentence could be structured in a better way or whatever it might be. They're really going to be diving into your ideas. They're going to be challenging you to, challenging you to think about things in new ways, maybe kind of synthesize or bring together um, something maybe you said in class that could fit really well in here or maybe you had a um, a lecture that you heard earlier in the week that could really fit well with your paper. So they're really going to be working with you, talking with you um, on your work in a really meaningful way. So that's Humanities 110. I'm going to pause for just a second, see if anyone has any questions. And I'm also going to put this up here because I think it'll be... Anyone have any questions about advising your freshman year or Humanities 110 or anything I have or have not set up to this point. I'll give it a second, see if anyone has questions in the chat and then I'll continue. No questions, okay. So continuing on um, into your other classes that you'll take your freshman year. So at Reed we have some distribution requirements. So these are areas of study that we ask you to take classes in in order to graduate. Um, many, many liberal arts colleges will have distribution requirements. Um, it's again that way to kind of um, give you the, the breadth of study where you get to experience and learn and hear about lots of different ways of thinking. Um, and then ultimately you'll choose a major which will become kind of the depth of your study. So that makes sense, breadth and depth. So for, <clears throat> for distribution requirements, we ask that you take three classes in the social sciences, three classes in the arts and humanities, and three in the STEM and natural sciences. So a total of nine classes for distribution. Um, this will be about a third of the classes that you take at Reed. So about a third will be in social sciences, about a third will be in arts and humanities, and about a third will be in natural sciences and STEM. That's just for distribution. And then the, another third of your classes at Reed, a lot of thirds here, a lot of, another third of your classes at Reed will be within your major, which we'll talk about here in a minute. And then the remaining third of your classes will be in electives, which is just anything outside of your major or distribution that you're interested in taking. So that can be a great opportunity for you to explore those kind of secondary, tertiary interests that you might have coming into Reed. Um, for those distribution requirements, um, while they are sort of sectioned off into different areas of study, um, they are really general and broad, right? So you can choose to take what kind of whatever you want within those. Um, so if you are someone who's really excited to take uh, foreign language classes at Reed, you can totally do that for your arts and humanities. Or maybe you want to take theater, or maybe you want to take music. 
um, for your STEM and natural sciences. Maybe you are really excited to take some math classes in college. Maybe you never want to touch a math book again. You can choose within those what you want to make um, possible for your distribution requirements. So kind of up to you there. And then those electives are really your spending money of college classes. So outside of your major and outside of distribution, what else do I want to take? What else do I kind of want to dive into? So there's a total of about 30 classes you'll take at Reed. Um, you have a lot of freedom and flexibility to um, play around, explore different areas. Any questions about major declaration or about um, class organization, um, any of the things, distribution that I've mentioned so far? Is it fairly easy to get into the classes you want? Great question. What happens if I click answer live? I don't know exactly what just happened, but I clicked answer live and now I'm going to answer it live. So hopefully you can hear me. Um, yeah, it's super easy to get into the classes you want. So we don't have any graduate programs at Reed. Um, you're not competing with any, any folks who are not um, undergraduates to get into certain classes or to have certain research opportunities, things like that. Um, so yeah, you'll, you'll kind of sit down with your advisor and depending on where you are in your um, decision making process for what kind of thing you might want to study. So if you come to read and you know exactly what you want your major to be, um, that's great. Um, that's one way of being. If you come to read and you have a bunch of interest and you're not sure, that's also great. There's equal kind of opportunity at read for folks along the spectrum in those different areas. Um, but if you know exactly what it might be that you want to study, you can kind of start taking classes in that right away. If you want to explore, play around in a few different areas before you decide, you can also do that. But there's going to be loads of classes available to you right off the bat that are not just like intro to psychology, things like that. Really classes where you'll get to dive pretty deeply right away. Yeah, thanks so much for asking. Any other questions right now? All right, cool. Let's talk about declaring your major and what that process looks like. So the end of your sophomore year is typically when you will declare your major. Um, you have two full years to really explore, experience other kinds of classes in different areas before you decide, yep, this is what I wanna major in. You have a few options for majoring. So you can either be a single major, which is you know English, biology, psychology, chemistry, etc. Great option. You can also be an interdisciplinary major. So you have these awesome majors at Reed that are combined interdisciplinary majors that bring together a couple few different areas of study into one. So if that sounds appealing to you, Reed is a great place to major in, um, in something that is really interdisciplinary. So we have these ranging from the social sciences, the arts and humanities, to the STEM areas. Um, you can be an American studies major, environmental studies major. Um, you can be a classics religion major, a chemistry physics major, a neuroscience. So a bunch of different majors that are kind of distinct disciplines coming together um, to be interdisciplinary. So really cool option. Um, you can double major at Reed. That is an option for students. It's pretty uncommon at Reed to double major. The main reason being because for every major you have, you'll write a senior thesis. So two majors is two theses, which is quite a lot of um, thesis. Uh, we'll talk about the senior thesis um, here in a little bit, but it's definitely a, a year long sort of a labor of love um, and definitely something that one is enough. <laughs> so two majors is kind of a lot. Um, and it's for this reason that we have a lot of opportunity for you to take classes again in different areas without double majoring. It's a little bit on the majoring process. Any, any questions about majors or class structure? We're going to take a step away from academics here in, um, after, after any questions to talk about um, kind of being a human at Reed, things that are going on on campus, stuff like that. No questions? Okay, so we all know that going to college and being a college student is definitely about academics, it's about school, but it's also really about the type of person you become, um, the type of environment that you wanna spend four years in, living, not just going to classes. So 
Reed is absolutely a community of learners. It is a place where people spend a lot of time together. Um, again, some very small student body. So really that opportunity for you to make an impact on campus, have a voice um, and really be involved in a lot of different things going on on campus. So um, we have, you know, over 90 clubs on campus. So loads of opportunities for you to get involved, but I don't think that that is necessarily what makes read distinct. A lot of liberal arts colleges have a lot of clubs, which is great. Um, but what is really cool about our clubs and the way that they work is that you have the opportunity to join and become a part of any group or club that you want. So we have no exclusive groups on campus, uh, which means that we have no Greek life, so no sororities or fraternities. We also have no varsity athletics at Reed, um, so no division sports. Um, if you hear that and you're like, darn, I wanted to play sports in college, have no fear. Um, you can absolutely play club sports at Reed. You can play intramural sports at Reed. We have every club and intramural sport that you would think, would think of. Um, we just don't have varsity athletics. The big reason for that is because, again, we don't have any exclusive clubs. We don't have any groups that say yes to some people and no to other people. It's kind of a founding principle that Reed was um, started on is this idea of inclusivity and an accepting community. Um, and so we really pride ourselves on cultivating a space where people can try different things and decide to be a part of it or not. So I hope that makes sense. Um, but that's kind of how our clubs work. We have everything ranging from, you know, really awesome affinity groups going on on campus, um, you know, queer student union, black student union, Latinx student union, etc. Um, to kind of more funky clubs, I'd say, like cheese club and kombucha club um, and outing club and things like that, outdoor club. So, yeah, a lot of opportunity to be involved on campus, but then also loads of opportunities to get involved off campus. So our largest club on campus is our service club. They get involved in loads of projects off campus. Um, you could be a volunteer at a Portland public school after school program, or you can get out and volunteer at a soup kitchen, kitchen or a food bank once or twice a week. Um, we have a really cool community pantry at Reed on campus that provides food to folks in the area. If that's something you're interested in being a part of, also totally an opportunity for you to get involved um, in a lot of ways. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the session, Portland really serves as an important backdrop to a lot of Reed students kind of experience at Reed. So it's pretty uncommon for you to talk to a Reed student who doesn't venture off into Portland and experience the city. Um, if you want to have a job or an internship or do research um, within the city, absolutely common place at Reed, something that many of our students will get involved in. So that's a little bit about campus life, kind of what's going on. I would say there's a really vibrant art scene at Reed, a really vibrant music scene, a lot of student bands, a lot of student groups, um, a lot of ways to get involved creatively on campus. Um, so yeah, really, really awesome place to grow as a person in addition to as a student. Um, I wanna talk about a couple other kind of social components of being at Reed. So the first is something called the honor principle, which you may have heard about at this point in your um, college search when you're looking at Reed. But we have this thing called the honor principle um, and it's a pretty cool kind of, again, sort of like inclusivity, very much a founding principle at Reed under which the college students, faculty and staff really operate. Um, if any of you were raised with the golden rule kind of backdrop uh, in your household that treat others how you would want to be treated mantra, that's basically what the honor principle is. But instead of just treating others how you would want to be treated, it's also treating others how they would want to be treated. So kind of taking a step further from the golden rule. What does this mean? Um, it means something a little bit different to every single person you ask about it, right? Everyone will kind of have their own experience with the honor principle. Um, it is a really real thing. It plays out um, on campus all the time in the way that people interact with each other. A really good example, I think, of the honor principle in practice um, is we have this super awesome outdoor club on campus um, and you can just walk into the outdoor center. Um, it's like right in the center of campus. You can walk in and you can just check out anything you want there. 
um, and all you have to do is say to the to the person who's working hey can I borrow a backpack for the weekend because I want to go backpacking with a friend or um, I'm missing a pair of hiking boots can I borrow a pair of hiking boots and they'll take you or a tent or whatever it might be they have an awesome selection they even have kayaks and skis there and they'll take you to the back and they'll show you all the different options and then all you have to do is just come back over take a pen and check that you took the thing that's it easy as that you don't have to pay a dime you bring it back whenever you want um, and the reason that this is able to function and work this way the reason we don't have a fee or like a late fee or things like that is because students take care of each other's things this is this idea that hey, if I'm borrowing something from you, I'm gonna bring it back in exactly the same condition that I took it. So it's kind of the honor principle, how it plays out socially in a way. It'll play out academically as well. Most of your professors will give you the opportunity to take your exams from home, um, which is a great thing, I think, for a lot of students to kind of move away from that testing environment um, in, a, in a classroom space. So definitely something to know about Reed, um, this, this honor principle. It's really upheld. Um, if in any way it's seen to have been violated um, by, by someone or someone, someone feels that it's been violated, there's an honor council of students, faculty, and staff that evaluates on a case-by-case -case basis when that has seemed to have been happened, to have happened in some way. So that's the honor principle. The last thing I want to talk about that kind of relates to academics but is also really a social thing um, is the way that we do evaluation and grading at Reed. Um, Reed is a place where when you turn in a paper, you turn in an exam, you're gonna get it back and it's not gonna have a letter or a number written on the top. Instead, what it's gonna have is extensive narrative feedback. So loads of comments on your work, um, whether it's a Spanish exam or an English paper, um, it's gonna have comments rather than a grade. You will be assigned a grade. So your professor will have a grade book, um, it'll be, you know, ABC kind of classic GPA scale. So you will have a GPA while you're at Reed. So in that way, it's pretty similar to a lot of schools. But what's different is you won't see those grades unless you specifically ask to see them. Or if you're ever earning below a C in a class and your professor will reach out to you and let you know. But otherwise, you really get the opportunity to receive feedback in a much more collaborative, much more comment formed way. Um, our students, I think, really, really appreciate this because it allows you to be able to have much more of a conversation about your work rather than kind of receiving a grade saying, okay, I'm done, and then never thinking about it again. And that way of thinking, that way of kind of receiving and giving feedback, I think is really a part of the culture at Reed. There's this sense of kind of cooperativeness and community rather than competitiveness. Um, there is no temptation to sort of like look over at your neighbor's page and see what they got on their exam because it's just going to be a bunch of comments and everyone's in the same boat. So it really helps you kind of value learning for the sake of itself and creates a community where people feel like they're supporting each other in that endeavor. So that's a lot of information. How about any, any questions? I'd love to answer a couple questions at this point. What are the requirements for the SAT, ACT, and GPA? Yeah, thank you for asking. Um, let's, so we're gonna talk in about five minutes for the last 10 minutes about admission. So I'm gonna kind of pump that over to our admission conversation that's gonna happen next. But thank you for asking, very important questions. Are there any other questions right now about academics or social life at Reed. Okay, well, I hope you're still there. I hope I haven't bored you too much. Um, I hope this is informative. If you have any more questions, feel free to just drop them in here. Happy to answer them. A couple more things I wanna chat about before we jump over to talking about admission. The first is, um, study abroad. I know that that's something that a lot of students are interested in learning about. So um, we have an awesome opportunity for you to study abroad. Typically students will go their junior year. Um, we have programs all over the world, every continent except Antarctica. You can travel. Um, a couple important things to know. There's kind of, I think, this misrepresentation of study abroad programs that it's always in the social sciences or the humanities. Um, at Reed, we have a loads of programs that offer students who are in the STEM majors to be able to study abroad and do 
um, research or field study work, um, things like that. Um, and many, many Reed students will do research off campus anyway without study abroad. The vast majority of our students are working with professors on research. About a quarter of our students end up earning doctorates after Reed. So there's definitely a culture of continuing education and also earning um, research opportunities. But if you want to do a research opportunity abroad, whether it's in STEM, humanities, totally an option. A um, couple things that are important to know about our study abroad programs. The first is that all of your financial aid will go abroad with you. So if you're on financial aid at Reed, you'll never pay more abroad than you would pay for a semester at Reed. Super important to know. Um, another thing that matters is that all of your credits will transfer back to Reed. So you won't ever lose any credits um, in the process of, of studying abroad. So that's a bit on study abroad. Um, and you can view a full list of our, our programs online um, for any, any kind of um, uh, study abroad programs we offer. The last thing I want to touch on before jumping over to admission is um, the senior thesis. So I, I touched on it earlier very briefly, um, but huge part of your kind of read academic career if Humanities 110 is sort of the front bookend of your time at Reed, um, the thesis is kind of the back bookend. So it's been around for as long as the college has. Um, it's a required senior thesis. So regardless of your major, every single student will write a senior thesis. And it's a full year long research project where you really get to take the reins and research absolutely anything that you want. So the sky's the limit with it. Um, you can do anything you want with it. You can do any kind of project, any kind of research. You'll pair up with a faculty member at the beginning of the year and you'll work with them really closely throughout the year to create a project and then at the end of the year you'll present it to a panel of faculty members um, and then when you pass you'll get your golden laurels um, that you wear around your head it's kind of your token of being done with your academic career at reed so really cool tradition really incredible opportunity for students to be able to explore a question that maybe they've had throughout their academic career at Reed that they've never really been able to kind of that, that itch you've never been able to scratch. Maybe you studied abroad and you learned about a really cool concept that you want to pick up in your research at Reed. Um, maybe you um, worked with a professor over a summer on a research project and something you learned there really interested you. Maybe it's just a an interest you have within your major that you want to explore that you kind of thought of in your own reading or whatever it might be. So really awesome opportunity and time for you to be able to kind of take the reins and, and explore whatever you might be curious about within your major. So that's the thesis. Are there are any questions about anything I've said up to this point or haven't said? Um, we haven't covered admission and financial aid yet, but that's what we'll do next um, but i want to give give time for folks to think about questions yes housing situation i was hoping someone would ask because i realized i, I neglected to talk about it so thank you <laughs> um yes so housing on campus um <clears throat> thanks for asking um between 70 and 80 percent of our students live on campus so in a typical year about 1100 students on campus this year is a little bit different with the way that we're doing restrictions, um, you know, safety COVID protocols. Um, every single student on campus has a single. So we're housing about 800 students on campus this year, um, which means about 600 of our students are living in off campus housing. Um, what's great is that you really get to choose and decide whether you want to live on campus or off campus. So assuming that next year um, and the year following, residence life will shift back to kind of the way that it's been in past years, um, you will get to choose if you want to have a single or a roommate. You also get to preference which residence hall you want to live in. Um, and you can live on campus all four years. You can also live off campus all four years. You can do a mix, which is what most of our students will do. Most students will live on and on campus their first two years and off campus their second two years, or maybe on their first three and off their last year, et cetera. So there's a lot of different options, um, a lot of different kind of choices for you to be able to choose how, how you want to live and in what setting. We have really kind of classic residence halls that are, um, you know, a few floors with um, a roommate and like a kitchen down the hall and kind of a shared shared bathroom situation. 
Uh, we also have loads of like interest houses on campus. So you can live in a foreign language house. Um, those are a really great option. If you're studying a language, you can do this immersive language experience. My personal favorite uh, residence hall on campus is our garden house. Um, they can grow their own food and then they distribute it to the community pantry on campus. So really cool, cool place. Um, we also have more like apartment style living. So especially for our juniors and seniors who want a little bit more kind of independence on campus, um, you can live in an apartment basically on campus um, and have a little bit of a kind of your own space. So that's housing. Thanks for asking. Anything else? Okay, well, I hope that was all really helpful. Um, I'm now going to spend some time talking about admission and financial aid. So let's start with financial aid first. Um, so Reed is a place that is committed to meeting 100% of all demonstrated need for all of our admitted students. So if you apply to Reed and you apply for financial aid using the FAFSA and the CSS profile, we will meet whatever need you have um, as long when you're once you're admitted we, we basically what we do is we look at your FAFSA your CSS profile and we um, come our financial aid team comes up with what's called an estimated family contribution which is the number of dollars per year that your family is estimated to be able to contribute to your college education we take that number and we take the total cost of attending read and we fill the gap so whatever that might be, the vast majority of that is going to be in read grants. So that's just money you don't you don't ever have to pay back. Um, there'll be a small work study component and a small loan component. Really important to know that read students graduate annually with the third lowest debt of any college on the West Coast um, and the the lowest debt, the number one lowest debt of any college in Oregon. So really proud of that. Um, definitely a place where if you if you have financial need, um, we will meet that demonstrated need. So that's financial aid. Um, and then admission. So um, regardless of if you are a junior or a senior this year, um, you're obviously at different, different phases in the process right now. Um, but we have decided this year, at least for the next two years, to be test blind. So um, that goes back to that question about the SAT and the ACT. We actually aren't even going to be looking at the SAT or ACT for at least the next two years. Um, that was a recent change made um, in response to the lack of access to testing um, due to COVID. So um, we won't be using your testing as a part of your application this year or next year. Um, as far as minimum GPA requirements go, we have no minimum GPA requirement. So regardless of what your GPA is, I would totally encourage anyone and everyone to apply to read if it sounds like a place that you would enjoy. Um, it's a place where grades really, um, we care about how you're doing in the, in the classroom, your grades do matter, but also what matters is the types of classes that you're taking. Um, are you someone who's challenging yourself within your circumstances? Do you have interest in learning new things and a curiosity about the world? Um, these are the things that really matter um, in your academic career. Um, if you have APs or honors courses or an IB curriculum available to you at your school, are you taking advantage of some of those courses? Um, and then also the type of human and person that you are outside of the classroom really matters to us. So um, hopefully I've illustrated that Reed is a place where the type of person you are is really valued and really felt. Um, and so we want to see what types of things you're involved in. Um, do you care about your community? How do you contribute to making your community a better place? Um, we require two letters of recommendation from um, two core academic teachers. Um, your personal statement, we have a writing supplement, which is a really fun supplement, I think. Um, and it's called the Paideia essay. If you've looked at it yet, and you've wondered how to pronounce that word, it's pronounced Paideia. Um, Paideia is a tradition at Reed. It's a week of classes that happens every year between fall and spring semester, um, and they are all taught by students. So for the Paideia essay, we ask you to tell us what you would teach a class on, if you could teach a class on anything for that week. So have fun with it is my biggest piece of advice. Show us truly something that you're passionate about and that you would like to teach a class on. We really aren't looking for any specific answer or any specific kind of um, approach to the essay, it's really up to you to make it 
however you want and structure it in whatever way you want. As long as it's authentic to you, it'll come across really well to us. So that's a little bit about the application and what it looks like. We have a few different deadlines. So November 15th is the first one. Um, that's early action and early decision. And then we have November, or sorry, December 20th, which is early decision two. And then we have January 15th, which is our regular decision deadline. Have to apply. Um, and that's that's it. That's really kind of the application process. Um, are there any last questions? We have just a few minutes. I would love to spend them answering any questions that folks have following up on anything I talked about or um, anything I maybe missed or didn't address that you want to hear more about. Go ahead and put it in the chat. I know there's got to be something that people are wondering about. No? Okay. Well, in that case, let's talk a little bit more. Oh, it looks like something popped up. My first quarter grades doesn't end until November 8th. Should my guidance office hold transcripts until those grades are in? Um, so, because our first deadline isn't until November 15th, um, it depends on when those grades will be available and what round you're applying. So if you're applying early action or early decision, um, I would just have your counselor submit those grades as soon as they're available. Um, yeah, either way, I would have your counselor do that. Um, yeah, if, if there's like a midterm transcript, if the transcript isn't available by the time you want to apply, you can send that in as kind of a placeholder transcript. And then once you do have the final one, you can send that in as well. So I hope that answers your question. Um, if it doesn't, put something in the chat so I know that it didn't answer it and we can we can figure out what, what, you're, what you're asking. Any other last questions? Okay, well, in that case, I know you all stare at a screen and do a lot of Zoom all day, so I won't keep you past the time. It was really a pleasure to be here and to chat with you all. I really appreciate you taking the time to learn more about Reed. Um, I, oh, it looks like there's, is there an, it actually answers it exactly, amazing. Is there an admission fee? No, we have no application fee. So um, no application fee for any of our students, something that we are, very committed to making the application as accessible as possible. And one of the ways we do that is through not having any admission fee, so nope. Awesome, thank you so much for asking such great questions and for being here. And um, I hope that you continue to take advantage of some of our virtual visit offer offerings that we have at Reed. Um, if you go to, if you Google Reed College virtual visits, um, it'll come up with a whole list of all the things that we offer, whether it's uh, one-on-ones with counselors or the optional interview um, or um, information sessions, virtual tours, things like that. So lots of things available to you all in the coming months. Um, thank you again so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And thanks for um, setting this all up and I hope to hear from you all soon. Thank you, Lilia, for a great presentation. It was terrific. Um, just a few closing announcements for you students. I want to let you know that when you close the window for this session, uh, you will see a link um, for a quick four question survey. We'd really appreciate it if you could just give us any feedback that you can provide is welcomed. Um, and just a reminder that in about a week, this session, the recording of it will be posted so you can check that out if you want to on the website. And that is it, everybody. So um, all of you have a great day. And thank you again very much for being here. Thank you so much. Take care. Okay. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.